The final person I wanted to talk about just for a few moments is perhaps the most star-crossed person in the history of the early phase of Pan-Africanism. And I'm referring to uh, Blaise Diagne. Blaise is born in Senegal. In fact, he's born in Gori. He is a leader in the early phases of the Pan-Africanist movement. He is the president of the 1919 Pan-Africanist Congress. Mm -hmm. He's born in 1872. Uh, he goes through a great deal of his life uh, in the French colonial service. He comes up, but it is at this point, during World War I, which the rest of the world is celebrating the 100th anniversary of, and I've been writing, those of you who've been to uh, PorterHarlem.net slash C. Gibbs have seen two articles I've written, on, one on African-American troops in World War I, the other on uh, African troops in Africa in World War I. Uh, in fact, I'll be doing a brand new presentation the first night of Kwanzaa at Union Temple on the Africans, uh, at least half a million of whom fought in World War I. But what I'm finding out as I read the foreign publications is, once again, Yes. That ain't getting out. That's right. That's not getting. This is what this is seen as a white man's war, mm -hmm. and so I want to turn back on it. And obviously, you're invited to Kwanzaa Union Temple. I know I'm going to see many of you there, if not most of you already. But Diagne was responsible, we believe, for recruiting almost personally forty thousand West Africans. He he told me, if you fight, and we've heard this story before, the French will recognize your humanity. They will give you rights. But what he didn't fully comprehend is the tricky way the French separated black folk inside Africa. He was able to get a law passed for four accepted communities in Senegal. They're known as the communes. They are Gori, St. Louis, uh, Dakar, and uh, Rufuscu. And in there, in these enclaves, where the primary price of admission was for you to be black but act more French than the Frenchman. They had more voting rights than African Americans in 1914. They, they had more political rights than we did here. But the ultimate, the, the saddest thing is that Blaise Diagne, for all of his greatness, for all of his political posts, his municipal posts, at one point he becomes mayor of Dakar. He cannot get beyond something he said in connection with the Pan-Africanist Congress, that he saw himself as a Frenchman first and a black man second. Now, you know, and, and understand, in that context, he's fallen ultimately into the trap that the French set up for him because they want you to lose your African mind. And whatever you do, don't put it number one. Put it number two. It is part of their mission civilisatrice. This is what, this is the mechanism when you when you when you wonder how it is, it's, it's similar to a process that the Indians uh, went through during the British colonial period. Uh, it, it's called Macaulayism, where in Macaulayism you are taught your stuff ain't worth nothing. That the only thing, the only target you should ever shoot for is what the Europeans have. So whether we call it uh, uh, <laughs> Macaulayism, oh, you can look that up. I mean, there are those of us who have a few issues with the provenance of Willie Lynch, but clearly there's no question about Macaulayism and its insidious impact. Ultimately, Blaise Diagne finds himself overtaken by events. When he tells black folk in the 1920s and 30s that they ought to be happy that the French mm -hmm. are taking good care of them, well, they ain't trying to hear that. that they that no, 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 no. We want independence. We want self-determination. We want self-reliance. We want our own history and culture taught and not diminished, demeaned, or denigrated. This is, in fact, uh, how he gets left. The, the thing about intergenerational racism and intergenerational self-surrender mm. is that he is the ultimate Frenchman. He just happens to be black. That's how he sees yeah. himself. Well, yeah. And you have to be aware of putting your culture like that. I just happen to be. No, God blessed you. God blessed you to make you black. He didn't curse you. It wasn't an accident. Or anything like that. He blessed you. And until we start looking at it like that, we'll always be behind the eight ball. 
Interestingly enough, he dies in 1934, and he's married. He marries a, a white French woman. Of course. His son <laughs> marries a white French woman. His one of his grandsons is named Blaise Diagne. He is born in Paris in 1954. He goes to Senegal in 1960. In 2005, he tells a news, uh, tells a journalist, I, I ain't going back there. I, I ain't got nothing for Senegal. Well, my mother was white. My grandmother was white. I'm with them. And this is the pernicious effect of intergenerational self-hate. It makes you model behavior that is inimical to your own mental self-interest. And so we move past him, but we acknowledge, and the Senegalese acknowledge him. The new airport outside that car will be named Blaise Diagne for the things he got right, not for the ocean of things he got wrong.